In the last video, we looked at what happens when you have current flowing in two wires. And it turns out if current's flowing in the same direction, the wires attract and move together. If it's flowing in the opposite direction, they move apart. In this video, we're going to use this gizmo, the remains of a transformer from an uninterruptible power supply, to see what happens when you have a magnetic field flowing through two rods and find out whether they attract or repel. And I got this from this old kilowatt UPS. Well, this is just the case from it. It had failed and seemed to be no longer repairable. And this is a rather nice transformer. It would probably normally be rated at a couple of hundred watts, maybe even a bit more. And in the case of the UPS, it was used at about a kilowatt, essentially because it was only used for a very short period of time because those batteries don't last very long. Anyway, what I did was I extracted the core from this and I had originally thought that this was a slightly better core where you have T sections and you have I sections and on a really good core they're staggered so you have a T and an I and then the next layer you have an I and a T. But it turned out that in fact you have all the T's together and all the I's together which is not quite as good a core but makes for a much easier job when you're trying to remove the core from the coil. So I've got the core here and I'm just going to put it aside. So the real gem is this coil here and the reason I wanted to extract it is because it's on a fairly nice plastic bobbin maybe for lack of a better term. And I did some measurements and it turns out that there are about 30 windings between the red and the black and between the black and the white it's somewhere around 290 windings. And so that's what we're going to use today. And well, let's get on with the experiment. Now, for the experiment, what I'm going to do is put these two bolts in here like this. And when we pass current through here, well, here's the spoiler alert. They're going to repel. And to make that a little bit more obvious, what we'll do is we will put this cut toilet tube inside here so they have a little bit of a track to actually move on. So if I cut it like this, maybe just like that, we'll have a rather nice track. There we go. So there's our track. Now, the problem is if I put these two things in here like that, the heads are going to interfere. So I'm going to cut them off right now. In the old days, we wouldn't actually use bolts. We would probably use nails, but I can't even find any nails in my workshop that are smooth and would move back and forth nicely on this. So let's cut the top off these bolts. Should be fairly easy to cut off with a hacksaw. Here's one. There's the other. So let's see how they'll fit in here. I'll line up the bolts so they're in essentially the same position and we'll just sort of put them in the middle like that and there they are they're kept together by gravity so now let's see what happens when we apply some voltage and hence current to the coil and this is a six volt battery made up of four 1.5 volt cells for an old flashlight and well we'll attach one of our conductors to the center terminal and the other to the exterior terminal and look what happens. So maybe we should see what happens 
when we apply less voltage. And to do that, I'm going to use this copper wire here to get to the back of the first battery. And well, here goes. You can see they don't move nearly as far apart. And you would probably expect that. Now, the question might be, what exactly is happening? We have a coil of around 290 turns around here. And I've actually measured its resistance, which is about one and a half ohms. And with six volts applied, that means there is four amps flowing through the coil. And if there's four amps flowing through the coil and it's about 300 terms, what that really means, it's like there was a little over a thousand amps flowing in one loop around the coil. So quite a bit of current. And what that does is it magnetizes the metal in the coil. And if there was just one piece of metal in the coil, it would become a magnet. And we can actually see that. We can use this little magnet detector and, oh, look at that. It actually picked up our piece of steel. But let's try that again. So there you go. You can see that it is in fact very strongly pointing to that piece of metal. Now, even without the metal, we would get a small magnetic field from the coil, but not nearly as strong. And you probably can't see that, but I can sure feel it. Anyway, if we put two of these things in here like that, what happens? Well, both of them become magnets. And depending on the direction of the current, let's pretend that both these ends become north. Well, you have north against north, what happens? They repel. And that's exactly what we're seeing over here. Now, what if we want to make a little primitive voltmeter out of this? Well, I'm going to just adjust this cardboard so that it's somewhat in the center again. And if we apply our voltage or current, we can mark it here and those two positions would represent six volts. Now, if we again use the copper wire to pick off what amounts to one volt, they don't go nearly as far. So we could in fact mark that position as 1.5 volts. So we have a very primitive voltmeter, which is kind of neat. Now, it would, of course, be better if we had something holding one of these in place. And, well, I'll do it like that. And now the one goes way up and, in fact, becomes a much better indication of what the voltage is. And we could, in fact, put a bunch of graduated markings along here representing the voltage that's applied. Now, there is something really neat about this form of voltmeter, which was, in fact, used in the old days, and that is it is an RMS voltmeter. RMS meaning root mean square, or the fact that you square the current or the voltage and then average it. And the reason you do that is because that's proportional to power, and that's a great way of figuring out what the equivalent AC voltage is to a DC voltage when you don't really know whether you should be using the peak or something less than that on the AC waveform. And it, in fact, turns out you use 0 0.707 times the peak. Anyway, this becomes a RMS voltmeter because you have a magnetic field here that is proportional to the current and a magnetic field here that is proportional to the current. And so you have something proportional to the current, something proportional to the current, and the force between them is proportional to the multiplication. So we in fact have a force 
that is in fact proportional to the square of the current or factoring in the resistance of the coil, the square of the voltage that's applied. So to turn this into a very nice voltmeter, all you would really need to do is fix this into place, put this on some sort of a meter pointer with a hinge over here, and then as the voltage or current goes up, this would move this way, and our meter would move that way, showing us the voltage. And that's how those old meters worked. That was today's experiment. You can imagine that if you had a laminated insert in your coil like that, we now know that each of the laminations in that insert are in fact going to try and push away from each other every time there is current flowing through this coil. And if they do that, well, you'll get a vibration like that if they aren't very well secured together in a really good coil. They put some lacquer or something on here to try and glue these together. They also weld the edges like that to try and hold them together. And in many ways, a big part of transformer design is trying to prevent these things from moving and making an awful noise. You also get the magnetostrictive effect where, in fact, the shape of the core changes with a stronger magnetic field. And that's really unavoidable. And the way you can remove its noise is generally through damping around the system. Now, this is actually a really nice experiment. In fact, I did this when I was a kid, and it would be a great science fair experiment if you have a kid in school. Now, obviously, you may not wish to go to the trouble of getting one of these things out of an old, uninterruptible power supply, but if, in fact, you take a old toilet paper roll and don't cut it apart, and instead, wind a few hundred, maybe 200 or 300 turns of speaker wire around it. That will essentially be the same number of turns as on this coil. And then you can very nicely, with only a few volts from a battery, demonstrate the same effect. I should point out you do need a decent sized battery because, well, in this case we were pulling about four amps and when we were only using one battery or 1.5 volts about one amp so the smaller batteries may not quite do it although they are getting pretty powerful these days so anyway that was the experiment i hope you enjoyed it see you next time